The passage of time. We have shared your joy at the birth of your children, and proudly we have watched them grow. We've taken care of your health care needs during the good times and the not so good. Your parents and grandparents have depended upon us. Together we have shared the struggles and the wonders of life. At Octibaha County Hospital, we are celebrating 30 years of being your lifelong choice in health care. At the meeting of the Starkville Board of Aldermen will now come to order. Please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to be followed by a brief moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You have before you a modified copy of the written agenda, and uh, there's one revision that didn't make it on there, uh, and that is uh, our final public appearance uh, was, was canceled uh, tonight. So is there any objection to revising the agenda to eliminate the final public appearance? That's stricken on there. Oh, is it stricken on the final copy? Okay. Well, never mind. No need for that. And Mr. Mayor, one thing. Um, uh, Ms. Brewer. And if we could put in, uh, I think you, uh, is your recommendation on the uh, letters of interest uh, for the school board position with a cutoff deadline of, uh, I think, that Thursday at 5 o'clock, February 11th, or whatever that date is, uh, whatever that, that, that Thursday is. And if we could just incorporate that, Mr. Mayor, into our consent agenda, just having a de cutoff deadline suggested by Ms. Brewer. You said February the 10th? Uh, Tell me what day that is. Okay, we'll say fair with the 10. Okay. So you wanted to read the first advertisement that run on February 20th, 2010? Uh, Ms. Lewis got his calendar. February 11th is the Thursday. Oh, the deadline for accepting letters of interest will be? 5 o'clock, February 11th. Okay. Yes, sir. Proposed revision to both the written agenda and the consent agenda are adding a sentence at uh, the end of the matter, which appears in your uh, consent agenda for advertising school board. Adding uh, to the end of that matter, the deadline for accepting letters of interest will be on February 10, 2011. Excuse me, February 11, 2010. I reversed it. Is there any objection to that revision? Any objection to that revision? Seeing none, please note the change. Any further proposed revisions? Are there any further proposed revisions? Seeing none, a motion to approve the agenda is in order. So moved. Motion's been made by Alderman Corey. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion been seconded by Alderman Dumas. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Magic clearly passes. Is there any objection to the matters that have been placed on the consent agenda? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, matters on the consent agenda are approved as well. All right, there are no minutes uh, currently for your approval, so we'll move to announcements by the mayor and board. And uh, First announcement I have is uh, it is my pleasure to recognize a couple of longtime employees with the city of Starkville who are retiring. Yeah. And the first person I'd like to recognize is Lovely Cromwell. He is better known around the city as Shorty. 
Shorty has worked for the city for 23 years and four months. He has worked in the street department for all of his service with the city and has helped with repairs to most every street in the city of Starkville. We asked Larry Black, who's been Shorty's supervisor, how to describe Shorty. He said Shorty was always very friendly and outgoing, and he's a very faithful, dependable, hardworking employee. Shorty is a person that does not let things get him down. Even though he's experienced some health issues, he's maintained a very positive attitude. Shorty, it is my pleasure uh, to recognize the job that you have done for our city. Uh, job well done. Another longtime employee who is retiring as well. Ulysses Gandy. Mr. Gandy has worked for the city for 18 years and 10 months. He started off in the street department, and then he moved to the landfill before becoming a driver in the sanitation department. In 2006, he had accepted the additional duties of being a foreman in the sanitation department. Mr. Gandy is well respected by all of his employees. He has always been one that completes his assigned duties very thoroughly and efficiently. You can always count on Mr. Gandy to help others to learn their job. He's a very quiet, private individual, and we are sure he has great plans for retirement. Mr. Gandy, it is my pleasure uh, to thank you for your service and tell you that we wish you the very best in retirement. <clears throat> announcement that I have is one you're all well aware of now and that's our retreat. Uh, uh, we will start at one o'clock on Friday and uh, go till around the end of the day uh, and then we'll start up at 9 a.m. on Saturday. That's going to be at the Golden Triangle PDD conference room. Is everybody familiar with where that is? And, uh, met with the Facilitator Phil Hardwick again, and have had meetings with each of you in the meantime, and uh, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I hope you all are too. Uh, and uh, should be a good weekend. Are there any questions? Any questions, comments about the retreat? All right. Any comments from the members of the board? Any comments from the members of the board? Seeing none, we'll move to citizen comments. Any citizen wishing to speak, please uh, introduce yourself and you'll be recognized for a maximum of three minutes. Good evening to the mayor and board. My name is Alvin Thomas Ward Selvin. Um, I'd like to say, our um, uh, vice mayor, Sister Trump. And Alderman Thank you, Alvin. Citizens have a few concerns. Um, the cold weather and have people where they uh, don't don't know that they are putting themselves in danger. Uh, they do not know the, uh, what appliances might over the overload circuit. Um, we can know of the things that you can put too much on the overload of the church to get it here. Uh, uh, the people are trying to stay warm, but if they have no gas, they don't have no gas. If they have no gas, they don't have gas. And uh, you can easily overload. And the people are concerned about uh, that, that we hope that uh, we be able to be in the next apartment soon because putting that heat on the car. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Further citizen comments? Oh, my name is Jim. 
Jeremy Outlaw. I live at one eleven and a half Garrett Road. I'm gonna start with Mississippi. Uh, I filed a complaint against an off-duty officer on Wednesday, January 13, 2010, due to an incident that happened on Saturday, January 9, 2010. I'm asking for an investigation because I feel I was in uh, unjustly targeted and have no other action. I just live in a letter to Captain Frank Nichols, uh, Police Chief David Lindley, and Ms. Marquita Outlaw. I requested uh, Ms. Outlaw to issue copies of this letter to uh, Mayor Parker Wiseman and members of the board, City Board of Alabama. I would like this matter to be thoroughly investigated, and I respectfully ask Mayor Wiseman and the Board of Alderman to investigate this matter and provide me with the decisions regarding my complaint. Um, that's all I have for you on the at this time. Thank you. And I and the board did receive uh, copies of the letter, and uh, the police de department is cu currently uh, investigating the matter, and I expect a, a report shortly on it. Okay, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Further citizen comments? Ms. Peeble. Well, I'm Mary Lee and I live on Greensboro Street in Ford 1. And I understand that there is a consideration for proposal tonight uh, for a possible moratorium on the cash lending, loan lending, check writing businesses in this town. I have copied some information from the Mississippi Center for Justice, so you won't think I have just pulled something out of the air. Uh, I looked in the, I do not have the current uh, telephone directory, but I looked in the one that was up in uh, December of 2009. To the best of my ability and trying to just go through them, there were 18 lending, check cashing, uh, loan advance, title loans, etc. businesses in this town. And since, I, I know for a fact, three have opened recently within the last three months or so. So I would say there are at least 20 or 21 of these types of businesses in Charlotte. While I'm not opposed to people having businesses, I am opposed to these businesses taking advantage of uh, primarily a certain uh, segment of our population. These types of lenders prey on poor and desperate people, often trapping them in a cycle of high, in high interest debt. Payday lenders and similar types of businesses cluster in areas of high poverty and take advantage of desperate people. Well, Starkville is not a center of high poverty so much, but we do have a sizable segment of population who does live below the uh, median income. And there must be something going on with all of these businesses uh, coming to town, and two of them locating in former fast food establishments. Uh, and you just, it makes you wonder uh, when they take on the redoing of that side of the building, uh, what is, um, Taking, taking place. Um, this is something that I think you need to consider as far as the city is concerned. Businesses prey on the people while contributing little to the city in terms of taxes. They don't produce sales tax and that's very important for a city. Sales tax is, sales tax is what we look for in our major commercial thoroughfares. And this is to go to support that comment. I found this very interesting. Um, payday lenders in Mississippi are permitted to charge loan fees of $22 for $100 borrowed over the course of a two-week loan period, which is the equivalent of 572% annual percentage rate. In 2006, payday lenders in Mississippi earned $200 million in fees okay, from $43 million in loans. These fees are equivalent to what Mississippi spent on welfare. Um, I just think that having a moratorium and a consideration for this
this uh, is in order. Other cities are doing it. Uh, I support it. And this is one of those decisions where you as Board of Aldermen will have a difficult time. Do you support the city of Starkville and the best interest of all the citizens? Or do you support, I hate to use this term, some of your p political cronies who are out earning a quick dollar? Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Bill. Further citizen comments? Ms. Eisen. Good evening to everybody. I'd like to thank uh, after this Martin Luther King Day was a very good day. I appreciate you for being I would just like to say to each of my to my alderman who just left out how to <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would just like to say, I've come to y'all and I've come to you and I know you're getting tired of looking at me, but I told you every time you have a meeting in the square of God, I'll be you. I'll be you. You know, every time we have a meeting, because I'm really concerned about this curfew that I have talked about. You know, this video started. I talked to uh, Frank Nichols, I talked to him, and we've been together, and he got some notes, and I've got some notes. I've been to some cities, you know, and I've been looking up the code on some of the cities, and as soon as I can get all my information compiled, I'm going to give out a copy of it. You know, what go on during these curfews. I would just like to say we still got a lot of stuff out there we need to take care of. We take care of our crime in the city here. We take care of it, and I know we have a greater city. We already got a great city, but we have a greater city. I just want to say that, but I'm, I am looking into it. And in Columbus, they, I, I got some papers from them that they sent me, and it's about the age of the children, you know, that are out on the streets during the daytime leave. It's not just nighttime. The ones that are supposed to be schooling, you know, homeschooling, they're out instead of being in school. So I would just like to say, I'm going to keep on. Next time I come, I may come with a petition. I don't know yet. But please, I would like for y'all just to consider. We need a curfew here in Starsville, Mississippi. Ms. Mueller, let me just respectfully uh, request of you, maybe Ms. Spool, just to see what's the feasibility of, of a curfew and what may uh, be workable, but you don't have to get into an explanation. Just just research and analyze and give us a report back to you, if you don't mind. Okay, and, and I can I can give you a report now uh, because uh, the, the, the police department, uh, at, at my request, uh, after the last meeting, uh, did do some research on it. Uh, and basically the conclusions of the memo uh, that, that I've received are that uh, this is a tactic uh, that's implemented uh, Oftentimes, it does have serious consequences uh, in communities uh, where crime of a particular type uh, is much more of a problem than currently exists in this community. Uh, there are some unique issues uh, in, in Starkville with this being a college town because uh, you have so many uh, people that are around the age of 18 uh, that the police would uh, be charged with uh, in enforcing a curfew law with uh, that pose some particular difficulties. The overall conclusion uh, of the report was it was something uh, that, that was probably not in the best interest of the city at this point in time. I keep on. Thank you. <laughs> Further citizen <Thank> comment. <coughs> Yes, my name is Brent DeWeese, and uh, thank you, Tom, Mayor, and the board. Uh, I'm here to talk about the moratorium that uh, Ms. Bill talked about, and uh, I would respectfully disagree with some of the things she said. Uh, the industry that's in this uh, moratorium does provide taxes and and does buy, uh, have provides employment to the, to the town, to the city. That, um, provides a service to the people who use it. No one is required to come and take out a, a loan. It requires the service and that uh, you're, required, you're allowed to come and get smaller amounts of loans that you would not be able to get at banks or uh, also at um, um, finance companies. Yes, at a higher rate, but also it's at a higher risk for the business that's uh, providing. Um, this is America and I believe in free enterprise and as far as putting moratorium that going to put a cap on something, you know, I, I would question that in the regard that you have, uh, you know, if somebody's willing to put their neck on the line for a, for a business, you know, it's their, their opportunity to lose it as well as make it. Um, I think the supply and demand will 
limited in itself of how many um, how many businesses would be, be in here in the net uh, industry. And that's why there's not 100 now. You know, if it was that easy, there would be one everywhere. Um, as far as the uh, some of the other additional items on that uh, moratorium, is, there seems to be, uh, at least from my reading of it, that you would not be able, if you had to try to sell out or you chose to get out of the business, you wouldn't be able to, you could not do that because um, there, the person couldn't sell out because you'd be limited on privilege, privilege license. You couldn't, the city wouldn't reissue one, which isn't fair to the person who's been in that business. And uh, it's not as simple as just you turn around and sell your accounts to someone else. So that's a you know a major uh, flaw in that as well. Also, um, you know as far as free enterprise, you have you know some people some people might say that we have too many pharmacies or whatever. I, you know my take on that is that you just or restaurants that you would um, be able to you know this American you, know, you want to start your own business and you can do that. Last, <coughs> lastly, um, you also have I realize that 12 does Highway 12 does have a lot of these. However, you know, you do have landowners that, you know, those people are leasing that, leasing those properties honestly and uh, keeping those build, buildings filled in the city, which also provides, you know, they're paying taxes on those buildings. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. Further citizen comments? Yes, ma'am. all that all of you do and I know the few of you that are here from the last term know me that I attend a lot of board meetings and so do a lot of people that I know in town and I know my neighborhood's had a lot of issues. We've had very active participation which I think is great. Uh, it's a shame sometimes it takes an issue to bring people to board meetings and I tell a lot of people the best free entertainment you'll get is to go to board meetings. <laughs> but I just have a question slash comment. Um, I read a lot online on the meetings. I'm very into documentation. I'm an auditor by profession, and that's what we do. Um, I just didn't was really kind of confused or didn't understand why we are not continuing the past um, habits, the past method of putting the board minutes online so that those who can't always get here, which I can't always get here because of work or family obligations, that it's very good to be able to go online. It also helps people feel very much more part of government. They feel like they can go online, everything's open information, it's that nobody's trying to hide anything. And there hasn't been anything online since I believe June the 23rd. And I would just ask, question why, also just ask you to consider reinstating that because it is very helpful and it does make people feel much more connected, and especially with all the new Alderman this year, people are very interested in how people are voting and you know, we're not going to get everything in the paper and shouldn't have to. But I would just respectfully ask you to consider reinstating that. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Alderman Court. Um, as someone who kind of helped work on the website and get it to where it is now, I wasn't aware that the board minutes weren't currently being posted, and I will look into it for you. And I guess one more comment on that is it's, there, there's no design not to post it. Uh, one, one of the things that does happen is uh, sometimes uh, one set of minutes will take longer to transcribe than another because of the length of the meeting. Uh, I, I'll follow up on it as well, but I do want to assure you that, that nobody uh, d decided that was a practice that wasn't going to happen anymore. Further citizen comment. Any further citizen comments? Seeing none, we'll move to public appearances. And our first public appearance is by Park Commission Chairman Dan Moreland and Parks Director Matthew Wright, Quarterly Report. And as y'all can see, we don't have a whole lot to present or we wouldn't have brought Matthew with us. Uh, the truth is, we don't have a lot to report. Everything is going smooth. I think we've got probably the best part personnel that we've ever had. Uh, we're trying to hedge out on some other things. Uh, adopt a park program. We sent out 20 of these to a lot of people in civic groups and all want to help. They don't have any money. So uh, we're coming up with an idea of kind of like adopt a highway mile, adopt a park, and uh, 
come by and clean it up. And we understand, according to Matthew, that the Board of Aldermen is going to take the key park and keep it picked up. But uh, with uh, anybody that we can get, you know, any groups that would like to participate in the adapt, adopt a park, pick up the trash, whatever needs to be done to it like that, a non-monetary thing, we would uh, certainly appreciate it and uh, we'll be hearing from this. I'd like to thank uh, David Lindley and Chief Mann for the help that they did and when we had the tragic deal of uh, India Williams funeral at the park, uh, we limited to 999 people inside the, the uh, building down there and I think we had probably 850 or something like that participation down there and uh, uh, of course certainly we didn't set this up to, to be a, have funerals or anything else but we've had elections, we've had funerals, we've had a lot of things that people would not have come to and seen the park and come back had we not had this type of stuff. So uh, we just appreciate uh, the help that they give us in controlling the, you know, the, the traffic and the, and the people that we had down there. SAY basketball was moving from the, uh, wherever we could have it, whatever gym we could beg and borrow it, to the park. Uh, it'll start when? Practices now, games will begin next week. Uh, a lot of you may get calls that uh, we wanted to go down and play basketball, but we couldn't get in. It was closed type deal. But we have to work the public uh, individuals around the SAY basketball and uh, events that we have in, in the park there. Uh, Matthew, you got anything? We're looking into uh, beach volleyball, and uh, we're also looking into a, a skateboard facility. Uh, another thing, we've had a lot of requests to have a dog park over at somewhere in McKee Park, somewhere over in this side of town. The one over on uh, Mont Creek is, is packed over there anytime you go. But uh, uh, everything is going good. We have a good crew, and uh, we just appreciate y'all supporting us. Matthew, you got anything? Is there any questions that any you questions? may have? Questions, comments from the board? Well, I got one question about the SAY basketball. Will y'all just do your notification like you normally do? Put a sign on the, yes, sir. On the door? <clears throat> I know there's Wi Fi in the um, sports plex. Isn't there, isn't there Wi Fi in the sports plex? That's free? It is. Okay. Is, uh, is that a sponsored, something that's sponsored or something that's just provided by? It's just some parts provided. Has there been any thought of doing that? elsewhere yes um, we, we've actually Richard and I have talked about the possibilities of, of uh, setting up certain stations in different parks that, that you could come out and bring your laptop lunch and have access to, to the internet and that's as far as we've taken it discussion one other thing we didn't touch on and I'll let Matthew discuss I mean uh, tell you about that is our uh, personnel we have a, trying to keep them in shape, uh, walking, so many laps, they get so much, explain all this, Matthew, to us. We have uh, what we call Healthy You Department uh, competition each month where employees are encouraged to, to walk on their uh, lunch break or even after hours and um, to uh, um, whoever wins the uh, extra, whoever walks the most laps or plays racquetball, a true game, uh, wins something at the end of each month. So um, it's going well. Um, we've had three, two months of it, and uh, we've had about nine out of the 14 employees participate each month. So. Can any of them let them walk with them? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Dorothy wanted to participate in it, but we couldn't find anybody to push her in a wheel bar, so I mean, we just did what we can do. Okay. But if, any more questions? Questions or comments from the board? Any further questions or comments? Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Moreland. Mr. Wright. Our next public appearance is the quarterly or annual? 
the annual report from the commission on disability. Either one, whatever's easiest for you. Good evening. Um, like Mayor Wiseman said, my name is Whitney Hilton and I'm the chairperson for the Commission on Disability for the City of Starville. Um, this year, while I was preparing the yearly report for 2009, I was pleasantly surprised um, about what the Commission in the City has accomplished concerning complying the initial steps of ADA that's required for local governments. The City is about 20 years behind in their transition in becoming accessible, but since the new term has begun, there seems to be a positive shift and not only mindset, but also approach. Um, not only does ADA seem to be taken more seriously as a civil rights law, um, but there also seems to be a better collaborative effort between debar departments and also with the commission. Um, the only two steps that have been completed, um, but what is encouraging is that instead of just being reactionary, um, these, when problems arise, there seems to be a motivation to establish a plan. Um, a large portion of the accomplishments that I will be sharing with you tonight um, have been completed by city employees or elected officials, but the commission has played a major role in initializing compliance by meeting with interested people like Mayor Wiseman and Alderman Sistrunk, um, ADA coordinator Griffith, and also um, Mr. Kemp and Ms. Spurl. Um, the Commission has provided a wealth of resources ranging from websites to practical guidebooks along with our own knowledge base and experience. <coughs> um, if you look at the handout that I provided, um, I would like to first share what was accomplished um, in the previous term and this is under number one under city governments and um, the Commission worked with Mr. Kemp to make downtown parking more accessible. Um, he also added accessible parking space here at City Hall. And also, he added curb cuts to the west side of Jackson Street from Highway 12 to 182. And I would point out that um, Mr. Kemp really went out of his way to make sure that the majority of the parking spaces downtown has a van access aisle, which is very important. And he did this without decreasing any of the general public um, parking. So, um, kudos to him. <laughs> Um, number two, everything under number two was completed while all of you were in office. Um, and if you notice, the first two compliance steps um, for local governments have been completed. This includes the appointment of the ADA, ADA coordinator and also um, the adoption of the grievance procedures. There's several other things that all of you have done, like allotting a budget for ADA compliance, adopting um, recommendation, excuse me, adopting amendments to the resolution. Um, that's going to expand the number of people in the commission and also broadens the qualifications. And last, um, the, the board has also adopted the city sidewalk coordinates that will really help to make new sidewalks more ADA compliant. We've also worked with Starkville Parks and Rec and um, we helped to um, facilitate an ADA uh, workshop for park employees. And we also have worked with Matthew Rye to um, prioritize accessibility goals and also to review general, go general goals about renovations and new aspects of parks that um, might be affected by ADA. And last, um, the Commission has worked with the community. We've given out several Advocates of the Quarter awards to individuals and businesses within the community. And then we also participated in Disability Awareness Month um, at MSU. We attended the Disability Awareness Fair and Mayor Wiseman um, actually came and participated in it. I really appreciate your involvement. And we also contributed to a panel discussion. And on the second page that I have, um, I just have a, a few goals over for two, uh, 2010. And um, the main things that I just wanted to highlight were the third and through fifth compliance steps. Um, right now, Ben Griffith has um, someone working on a self-evaluation of the city to find out um, what needs to um, be upgraded to be accessible. And after we do that, a transition plan would be the next step. And then also writing a public notice about accessibility of city programs. Um, we have many long-term goals, short-term and long-term goals. Um, but we do realize that it will take a lot of time and a lot of effort to actually accomplish all these. But um, if we tackle one thing at a time and have a plan, eventually our community 
will be accessible and inviting to all. Any questions? Questions or comments from the board? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hill. <clears throat> all right, next order of business is a couple of public hearings. Uh, these are both going to be the second uh, public hearing on proposed ordinances uh, that you'll have a, a, a chance to uh, evaluate later tonight. Uh, the second public hearing on the changes to the Starkville Code of Ordinances, Administration Article 2, Board of Aldermen, Section 2-29, Rules of Procedure, uh, is... Uh, is our first in that series. Uh, and that, of course, is the change to an ordinance that uh, was found still existing on the books uh, that, that established Robert's rule, Rules of Order as the procedure that would be used by the board. That, of course, is something that has not been practiced uh, in, in some time uh, because the ordinance was not known uh, to be in existence. Uh, so this is an ordinance that brings our practice into compliance with the ordinance would we'll replace that ordinance with one that says the board will adopt its rules at the outset of, of each term uh, and in the event that the board should choose not to adopt it uh, would maintain the rules from a previous term questions and comments from the members of the board any questions or comments from the board all right seeing none we'll move into the public comment portion of the public hearing and in keeping with standard practice, uh, we will alternate hearing uh, a speaker wishing to speak for, then a speaker wishing to speak against the proposed uh, ordinance. Uh, each person will be allowed to speak for a maximum of three minutes, and each side uh, will be given a maximum of 15 minutes in total. First, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed change? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing no one, is there anyone wishing to speak again? As I sit, spoke at the last meeting, our uh, the citizens are look, looking for uh, the administration to try and hold us together at home. So why the citizens, why the combination, try to get some things done? So there's a lot of needs that we need done. Our, uh, a lot of people want jobs. Uh, uh, we don't need for people to start robbing people in, in, in daylight because they don't have, uh, they have nothing to do. That the citizens <coughs> won't help and won't feel like they're so Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Is there one, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed change? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone wishing to speak against? All right, seeing no one, we will close the public comment portion of the public hearing and move into discussion from the members of the board. <coughs> Any discussion from the members of the board? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing on uh, the proposed change to Section 229 uh, of the Code of Ordinance. Uh, the next public hearing is also the second public hearing on a proposed ordinance, and it is on the amendment of Sprinkler Ordinance 2007-4 and Code of Ordinances Chapter 58, Fire Prevention and Protection, Article 3, Automatic Fire Suppression System for the City of Starkville. Chief Mann, uh, would you like to Introduce the topic. Good evening, Board. Um, the the change to the ordinance that uh, that that we've asked for you to consider 
basically it consists of adding definitions to the to the document to, for it to flow better for the reader. Uh, the there was one change of moving a concrete parking structure from section seven to section six to uh, allow it to be exempt from sprinkling a concrete structure, and that's basically it for the changes. Uh, I'm field any question, be glad to answer any questions you may have or you may have. Questions or comments from the board? Are there any so there's, there's been no changes from our last public hearing last week to this week? No. Okay. No. Is the parking garage at the hospital more than 2,500 square feet? Yes. So according to section 7 it will be equipped with a fire suppression sprinkler system? The 7A says, I mean, that's, I agree with what you're saying and going back and look at 7, 7A says enclosed vehicle repair garages. That's not, that's just garage and shop. That's correct. that's correct. That's correct. That is not, that is not, it doesn't have anything to do with the hospital. What's the, what's the main purpose behind a sprinkler system? Is it for protection of the structure or is it for safety of individuals? It's primarily life safety. Life safety. Uh, with building conservation, the second. Okay. Are there other types of systems that'll be in the parking garage that'll, from the life safety standpoint? It is. Okay. There, there's uh, standpipes, which is basically a, 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 a mechanism for us to pump water up into the to the stairwells if if we need to. It's just simply all it is. It's a connection for us to hook our hose to. So you can make public knowledge. And speaking with you, it's a pretty interesting fact. You told me that most car fires are not a real life safety issue because they're pretty much contained just with that single car, correct? I mean, they don't have a chance of spreading like a residential fire? Or... Yes, and, and, and even if a car fire does occur in the parking structure, it's, it's going to be the sprinkler system wouldn't be able to put it out anyway because it's under the hood or inside the, the uh, seating area. So the water wouldn't be able to reach it anyway. Further questions or comments from the board? Any further questions or comments from the board? Thank you, Chief Man. You. We'll now move into the public comment portion of the public hearing and uh, keep with the uh, same rules uh, discussed before. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed change? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing no one, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Good evening, here. my name is Adam. Uh, sprinkle system is uh, uh, something that a lot of people that don't know what they are or what they're for have to be used to. Citizens do not want another tragedy of nine people getting killed that is the cause. A lot of people are afraid that water and electricity will be easy to get shot. And so uh, that uh, you want a system that if a electrical fire started in water and someone to get trapped in that uh, you just looking for safety, and uh, uh, you're hoping that this is a help to kill the hope. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? <coughs> anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing no one, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing no one, we'll move back into the board discussion. Is there any discussion on the proposed ordinance from the board? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll close the second public hearing on the proposed changes to the sprinkler ordinance. Uh, there are no items under mayor's business this evening, so we'll move to board business. And the first matter of board business for consideration is the making of appointments to the Commission on Disability. Ms. Sistra. Um, the Commission on Disability, we recently um, addressed the uh, establishment of that commission and expanded its membership 
to seven from the original five. They've also lost a member uh, when one of their members moved out of town. In the advertisement for people to fill out the, the, the three vacancies on the commission, we, we had um, an exceptional group of applicants this, this time. We have four really good candidates. I'm going to nominate three. Um, the, the fourth, I, I think that Ms. Um, that uh, Ms. Hilton is going to see if she can keep her involved by doing some other work with the commission and also um, encourage her to apply if there are vacancies in June. I think there are a couple of seats that may become uh, are up for renewal in June. Um, I would like to move that we approve the nomination of Janie Sirlo New, who is the director of the TK Martin Center for Technology and Disability at Mississippi State, um, that we approve the nomination of um, Lucy Wong Hernandez, who is an adjunct professor on campus and who has worked extensively in the um, field of um, ADA compliance in the past and that we approve the nomination of William Sansing, who is employed at the Rehab Research and Training Center on Blindness and Low Vision uh, at Mississippi State. And I'll, I'll, I'll make that in the, in the motion with just those names. So I move approval of, or appointment of, Janie Surlow New, William Sansing, and Lucy Wong Hernandez to the Commission on Disability. All right, motion has been made by Alderman Sistra to approve the appointment of Janie Serlo New, Lucy Wong Hernandez, and William Sansing to the Commission on Disability. Is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey, Alderman Sistra. Do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion from the board? Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Alderman Sistrunk's motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Next matter before you is the consideration of amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Starkville Administration, Article 2, Board of Aldermen, Section 229, Rules of Procedure. Discussion. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to amend the Code of Ordinances of Starkville Administration, Article 2, Board of Aldermen, Section 2-29, Rules of Procedure. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Perks. Alderman, Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merit? I do not. Any discussion? Alderman Carver. Does that motion say that the next board will have the option for the selection of the said rules of procedures? Yes. The next board will have, I guess my question is the next board will have the option to choose the procedures mm -hmm. that they want to, whether it be Roberts or Parliament. Yeah. Yeah, this is essentially codifying, or, or the attempt of it was to codify what we already did. Uh, somewhere along the line, um, uh, the ordinance that is on the books was forgotten. So the choice is either start abiding by that ordinance, which is to use Robert's Rules of Order, or codify what we do in place of it. Discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. This measure clearly passes. The Passage of Time. We have shared your joy at the birth of your children, and proudly we have watched them grow. We've taken care of your health care needs during the good times and the not so good. Your parents and grandparents have depended upon us. Together we have shared the struggles and the wonders of life. At Octibaha County Hospital, we are celebrating 30 years of being your lifelong choice in health care.
ordinance number 2010-2, an ordinance amending the ordinance 2007-4, requiring the installation of automatic fire suppression systems in certain structures in the city of Starville, Octavia County, Mississippi, as provided. Alderman Corey has moved the approval of Ordinance 2010-2, uh, amending the Sprinkle Ordinance 2007-4, Code of Ordinances for the City of Starkville, Chapter 58, Fire <coughs> Prevention and Protection, Article 3, Automatic Fire Suppression Systems. Alderman Corey, is that your motion? Do I hear a second? Sure. Motion's been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Corey, you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion by the members of the board? Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Uh, next matter before you is the consideration of placing a moratorium on the issuance of certificates of occupancy and privilege licenses for check cashing, title loan, and payday loan uh, businesses for 12 months or until the adoption of the city's new comprehensive plan. Discussion. Um, I, I am proposing this ordinance. As Ms. Beal pointed out, there has been a proliferation of these. The moratorium gives us the opportunity to study this and uh, make a, a, a reasoned decision about how we want to handle these businesses as part of our comprehensive plan. And so that's where, that's where this has come from. Um, and I would like to... Um, there's um, are there other discussions anyone else have questions if not then I would like to move approval of the resolution placing a moratorium on the issuance of privilege licenses and certificates of occupancy for check cashing businesses payday loan businesses and title loan businesses for a period of 12 months or until the city of Starville has completed and approved the comprehensive plan Alderman Sistrock has moved approval of a resolution placing a moratorium on the issuance of privilege licenses and certificates of occupancy for check cashing businesses, payday loan businesses, and title loan businesses for a period of 12 months or until the City of Starkville has completed and approved the comprehensive plan. Alderman Sistrock, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. And motion has been seconded by Alderman Perkins. Alderman Sistrock, do you wish to speak on the merit? No. Discussion by the board. Mr. Mayor, I just want to say I, I concur with all the language in this resolution. I also <coughs> concur with all the comments made by former Alderman Ms. Mary Lee Bill. So I fully support this, this resolution. Alderman Park. I, I just had a question about, I guess, uh, item two. Um, upon the cessation of operations of currently existing aforementioned businesses, for whatever reason, their privilege license and certificate of occupancy will not be valid for renewal or transference to another entity. I guess my question um, question is, so if, if, if one of these businesses goes out of business, I understand that they will not be allowed, nobody else will be allowed to open that up if they go out. What, what in the in situations of if they were, if somebody was retiring or, or moving, they could not, are we allowing them to sell their business or we're not allowing them to sell their current business? The effect of, of this is, is, is doing just what's written uh, essentially for this 12 month period and the important thing to remember about this is this is uh, just for a 12 month period or until a more permanent uh, uh, decision is made by the board uh, if that were to occur uh, that person or that business would not be able to transfer uh, occupancy of that establishment in other words, all other aspects of the business that have value, such as uh, the accounts, uh, you know, the facility itself, uh, which presumably has value for something other uh, than uh, what, what, what the purpose that is used, uh, would, would still certainly be transferable. Uh, and the city would not be in a position to regulate that, nor would I assume it would want to. Uh, this just addresses the issue of uh, allowing uh, that that business in its uh, current form is one of these uh, a, a type of institutions its own moratorium uh, continuing to turn over in perpetuity uh, in that situation so go, 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 I'm sorry, go, ahead. go ahead well my, I guess I had I don't think I'm 100% clear is if somebody were deciding 
if somebody needed to pass their business on to their heirs or if somebody needed to to move that business to someone else, that would not be allowed or it would be allowed? What wouldn't be allowed is if an event triggers a different individual uh, needing a certificate of occupancy and a privilege license to do that business in that location, uh, as long as this moratorium is in effect, uh, they, they would not be able to do it there. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, my question also falls number two is is an, is an inheritance a transfer of ownership or is inherit you know if somebody were to, to die or retire and hand the business down does, does this affect them or they can keep <coughs> operating under the same uh, privilege license? And I, I think this is a good time for the city attorney uh, to weigh in. Uh, a transfer or inheritance is a transfer of ownership, and the key word with provision number two is cessation. Should the business stop? by nature of this transfer, then the new certificate of occupancy would be withheld for the 12-month period of the moratorium. Let me just lay some groundwork uh, on, on the power of the municipality to do this. This issue has come up before. It's come up before in the context of billboards, and um, the municipality has the power to issue a moratorium based on its power to issue ordinances under Mississippi Code 21-17-5, and also under its power to zone. And that's code section 1711 extended. The Mississippi Attorney General has said that those two powers combine to allow the municipality to uh, impose these moratoriums. And the issue came to light in an Attorney General opinion in 2008 involving billboards, where the city of Summit wanted to issue a moratorium on any new billboards going up. And the Attorney General specifically said that that moratorium is okay that it complies with those two statutes and the power of the municipality to do so. So uh, putting in a moratorium is okay. I, I too have a question with provision number two, and I have to admit that I didn't see the transfer of ownership issue initially when I reviewed the resolution last week, and it was brought to my attention uh, later this afternoon. What I can say about provision number two, Alderman Parker, is unlike the attorney general opinion on billboards that says moratorium from a broad standing is okay. I, I don't know, I don't see any law out there whether that says that number two is okay or not okay. So to be totally comfortable on that point, we would need to seek an AG opinion because both me and uh, Ms. Spruill have kind of scoured the legal research engine to try to find any other moratorium law in Mississippi and there's just not any that speaks to that particular issue. Mr. Mayor, may I have a question? Alden Park, Ms. Spruill, can you come up to the table a minute, please? <laughs> uh, Ms. Pruill, while you're coming, you, you spent a lot of time researching this matter. Uh, I know you've looked for case law, attorney general opinion. I think you're the one that pulled this one from Summit, and, and I think, you know, of course, you're an attorney as well, and, 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 and you, don't, you, you don't see any problem with any of this um, language. And I'm just asking you specifically here, you don't see any problem with this, do you? I, I do not. Okay. The, and, I, and I took some of the language from multiple um, um, documents that had been put forward by other cities and kind of put this together and um, city attorney and I spoke about it and so I, I'm, I'm comfortable with it but you know that's not to say that uh, getting some information from the AG uh, would be inappropriate. But as but far I think as, as the city attorney said as far as you know there is nothing uh, that <clears throat> prohibits the language. In no, it. there's nothing that prohibits so, the language. You know, I, with that being said, and we just talked to the CAO here, I, I don't see any need for the board just to lay on it. There's no law that says we can't do it. Forcing a course to interpret <coughs> the first impression all the time. I yes. think it's a good ordinance. So I just want to make sure that you, know, that you share with the board that you had spent a lot of time researching. As a matter of fact, I've talked with you about mm -hmm. looking up any case law or st uh, statutory provision or AG's opinions right. and during our old lengthy calls and conversations you yes. represented that uh, everything was legally sufficient and, um, and I've read the document that you forwarded. So, I think we have a good document before us tonight, and uh, I think we just need to proceed, Mr. Mayor, and go ahead and getting it approved and, um, and putting it on the books. We have at least 17, 18 check cash in place. We heard from the distinguished former old woman from Ward 1, and she made some very good comments, and um, we need to get it on the books, and uh, this is good and healthy for our uh, city and our economy. So let, I'd like for us to go ahead and, and get this, res this resolution adopted tonight. Thank you, Ms. Royal. Further discussion? 
So cessation of operations would mean that, it, that if it closed down, I mean, that, that's the way. I mean, and, and uh, I, I, do, I do agree with the ordinance overall. I absolutely agree that, that we should look at everything, and I think Alderman Sistrunk has done a good job drafting, drafting this up. I, I agree with the, the overall plan. plan. Uh, I just want to make sure that our, you know if we do have any local businesses that they're protected and uh, if, if they can't be you tell them that they don't have a value but I mean the way I'm understanding it now cessation of operations would mean if they were to close down and they couldn't open back up and I agree with that <clears throat> that would be the normal definition of cessation sure okay. would. Further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all but I, I, we need to do this one by roll call. Uh, please answer uh, yay, nay, or abstain when the deputy clerk calls your name in response to Alderman Sistrunk's motion. Alderman Carver? Yay. Alderman Sistrunk? Yay. Alderman Corey? Yay. Alderman Parker? Yay. Alderman Dumas? Yay. Alderman Perkins? Yay. Alderman Vaughn? Yay. By a vote of seven in favor with zero against and zero abstentions, this measure passes. The next matter before you is the consideration for calling a public hearing on amending the Solid Waste Ordinance 2008-2 and the City of Starkville Code of Ordinances, Chapter 94. Alderman Park. Uh, well, we were, uh, our uh, Solid Waste and Recycling Committee was tasked with uh, doing a few things, a few things with the ordinance. One is, and I think you have a copy on at the table and, and the things that are changed, or deleted, or highlighted. One, we basically added language to deal with recycling uh, as you know we have the curbside recycling program now so we needed to add language into the ordinance that reflected our recycling aspect of of our uh, of our solid waste department we also added uh, language that would make it a a code violation for tampering with curbside recycling basically we were running into an issue where people were, were after the bags were being set at the road, they were being cut into and, and items were taken out for their own personal gain. So we basically made it in this ordinance that when that bag is set at the curb to be picked up, it becomes the, the property of the city of Starkville. Um, so that will, and it's a code violation if anybody is caught uh, tampering with that bag. The other was based on uh, an issue we had several months ago when we first, uh, when we first took, took office in that we were limiting who could do business in, un, in recycling in the city of Starkville. And the language in this new ordinance basically allows other companies, if they so choose, to do recycling within the city of Starkville by obtaining a privilege license. Those were the three basic changes that we've made to the ordinance. Alderman Carp. I just want to first of all say thank you all, Solid Waste Committee, and the work you've done with this. The only thing I had a question in, in reading this was the uh, code violation for the individuals. You, I can't imagine anybody going through curbside recycling bags for their own gain, but those people and the code violations, what type of penalty will they face? And is that typical? I don't see the code enforcement officer here, but what kind of penalty are they going to, you know, is it a typical three-step process? or Have you all discussed any kind of penalty? We, we actually have not got that written in there that was brought up at our last meeting. Uh, we do need to actually, by the time this comes before our public hearing, we will have that out okay. as far as what that code violation is. Further discussion? <coughs> Further discussion? We don't have a motion pending yet. Uh, Mayor, I move that we... I move that we call for a public hearing on amending the Solid Waste Ordinance 2008-2 and the City of Starkville Code of Ordinances, Chapter 94. 
Alderman Parker has moved to call for a public hearing on amending the Solid Waste Ordinance 2008-2 and Chapter 94 of the City of Starkville Code of Ordinances. Is at, that your motion? At our next regular meeting. At, at the next uh, regular board meeting, which will be on February 2nd. Second. Second. Yeah, I believe that's right. All right. Alderman Parker has moved to call a public hearing on amending the solid waste ordinance 2008 2, Chapter 94 of the City of Starkville Code of Ordinances at our next regular board meeting on February 2nd, 2010. Is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Dimmons. Do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. Next matter for your consideration is the calling of a public hearing on repealing and replacing the City of Starkville Floodplain Ordinance 2003-2 and City of Starkville Code of Ordinances Chapter 62. Mr. Griffin. <clears throat> um, thank you, Mayor and Board. Um, the item before you this evening is to call for a public hearing to adopt the uh, not only the city's new newly proposed floodplain ordinance, but also the uh, new FEMA floodplain maps, flood insurance study, um, also the uh, which also would include the digital maps that are available online through the State of Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality as a reference. And um, I know this is just a call for a public hearing, but um, it's become very time critical. Uh, the city engineer and myself have been talking to uh, MEMA representatives as well as FEMA and their mapping consultants regarding the maps. Um, we had submitted some concerns regarding the maps. Um, we had not had any kind of feedback from them. A couple weeks ago we received the new maps. Um, following up, a uh, MEMA representative contacted me uh, last week. And uh, excuse me, the week before, uh, on Friday, and asked if uh, we were going when we were going to adopt our uh, ordinance, and uh, I, I again asked about the comments and concerns we had provided about the mapping, and he said uh, flat out that if we don't adopt the ordinance by the 17th of this month, the city runs the risk of being dropped from the flood insurance program. So it's, it's become very time critical. And I'll try to answer any questions that, that y'all may have. I provided a copy of the ordinance uh, in your packet. Uh, I did not provide a cover sheet with uh, some backup material. I had intended to do that for the public hearing. I understand there was a question about that, and I uh, put something together today that should be at your seat. Uh, I think it outlined a couple of the major changes, and there's a chart. And I guess I know the old uh, saying, a picture's worth a thousand words, and I can kind of show you a good example, and I, what I tried to do was get a copy of, of our current floodplain map, and this one is dated 1981. So, just to give you an idea of the need for adoption of a new ordinance, y'all probably all seen these. They're, you know, 1981. This is the current ones. Uh, there's a few of them that were updated, I believe, in 1990, but not certainly not all of them. Uh, this is a copy of the new ones, and I believe you can pretty well see a significant change based on an aerial map. Um, you can actually pick out your, your house, your rooftop, you know exactly where your property is and where the floodplain boundary is. So just the difference in the types of maps alone um, required, or I should say necessitated, uh, FEMA as well as MEMA coming up with a new um, basically a repeal and replace on the ordinance as, as we know it. And I can certainly try to answer any questions that y'all may have this Excuse evening. I, Alderman McCord. You said the 17th of this month, but I'm yeah. assuming you meant February. I'm, I'm February, I'm sorry, yes. Okay. 17th Good. of February. The difference between tomorrow and... Yes. Um, matter of fact, these maps, um, I know it's kind of hard to read here, but at the bottom of these maps they say effective date February 17th, and I received these about two and a half weeks ago. And then a week ago I was contacted by MEMA and they said, oh, well, you got adopted by the 17th or y'all are dropped from the flood insurance program, which means everyone who has flood insurance 
will now have to go out and buy flood insurance on the open market, which will probably right off the top be three times the rate of what it is now. Um, some of the things that I outlined in the memo, um, the city engineer and myself have both been attending classes in uh, Emmitsburg, Maryland uh, for floodplain management. Um, we've become a lot more familiar with uh, floodplain management, how it works, and how, how the flood insurance program works as well. Um, one of the things that we would like to do, and of course with, with the board's approval and, and, and um, hopefully recommendation, is move toward uh, getting the city into the community rating system which if we do that, that means that we've adopted some things that are a little above the minimum. And of course, the more points we accumulate, the better our rating, and the better our rating, that reflects directly back to flood insurance. So if you have flood insurance and we're in the community rating service, um, the, the higher we score in the ratings, the lower our insurance rates would be. And that's citywide, anyone who has flood insurance. So there's a direct benefit that folks can see from that. And um, according to FEMA, or especially MEMA, we're, we're already doing a lot of those things now, the city engineer and myself. So what we're wanting to do is codify that into the new code and, and move forward with that. And I'm certainly trying to try to answer any questions y'all have. I know this is kind of last minute to throw on y'all with, I put together a memo today for y'all and there's a lot of info. Um, one of the biggest things is the base flood elevation. And I, I put a chart, uh, this is the third page that y'all have. It's, it's a real simple chart. And basically, if it shows what the cost of flood insurance over the life of a 30-year mortgage is. When you finish your, your, your finished floor elevation is at the flood, base flood elevation, two feet above and two feet below. And it is a huge difference that the chart shows uh, over the life of a 30-year mortgage that I, I think pretty well speaks for itself. That's reason enough to go for it right there. Uh, it's, it's, All of them in demos. I move approval to hold public hearings on February 2nd and 16th to repeal and replace current flood ordinance in conjunction with adoption <coughs> of updated flood insurance rate maps and other supporting date, data to meet FEMA's required effective date of February 17, 2010, and to remain in the National Flood Insurance Program. Alderman Dumas has moved to hold public hearings on February 2nd and 16th to repeal and replace current floodplain ordinance and in conjunction with adoption of updated flood insurance rate maps and other supporting data to meet FEMA's required effective date of February 17, 2010 and to remain in the National Flood Insurance Program. Alderman Dumas, that's your motion. It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Carver. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merits? Do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Magic will have passed. Thank you, Madam Board. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Next matter before you is the discussion and consideration of the budget amendment for the repair of the wastewater pumping station on Sand Road. Mr. Depp. You be Mayor Board. Um, last meeting, uh, Alderman Sistrunk asked that I go back and review the uh, the budget on this proposed budget on this project and, and see if there's any way we could reduce it. Um, just a couple of things that, that have happened since that meeting that are of good news. One is uh, last Wednesday, um, I was notified by Phyllis Benson that we'd been approved for the CDBG emergency um, funding of $100,000. So I've uh, included that in the, um, in the, in the uh, the proposed budget amendment. So I've subtracted that, that figure out. And then also I talked to uh, Lee Kirkpatrick over at Clearwater last Thursday, and he seems pretty optimistic that the, uh, the two lower price pumps that were quoted in the mid $70,000 range will, will probably be able to get those to work, maybe with some modification uh, in lieu of the, uh, the higher price $100,000 plus or minus pumps we had we had gotten quotes from from the flight people when we set the budget up. So uh, so I went ahead and, and reflected that savings in the budget and then also adjusted the contingency uh, portion of that as well. So um, so with that um, bottom line, um, we're looking at a total budget allocation netting everything out of, a, of, a of $780,000 for the project. 
And then I've outlined the budget amendment uh, entries on the second page. Are, are those the pumps we all we voted for? Are those are those the pumps? Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I didn't get a second page. Oh, you didn't get a second page. Okay. Um. You want me to? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that'd be nice. No. Okay. <laughs> I only got one copy. I don't know what, I mean, what happened. I didn't. Are those the pumps we already voted to buy? Yeah, he's still he's still working with the pump manufacturers on the curbs. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with pumps, yeah. but they have curbs where they, they pump certain amounts and draw a certain amount of horsepower at certain mm -hmm. positions. So he's still working with them on, on modifications to do that. But um, we hadn't ordered them yet. We just want to make sure. You know, we want to make sure we get something in there that's going to, that's going to work. Um, so we hadn't we hadn't ordered them yet, but um, he feels certain he can work with these these two lower price vendors to get to get something in somewhere in that price range that's going to be considerably less than the uh, than the other ones that we use for the budget budget figures discuss alderman sister um I, i'm it's great news about the the grant and also about uh, cost savings on on the pumps the other the other part of my um concerns last week <coughs> well not so much with the work the work no doubt needs to be done mm -hmm. but um, our, our planning process and, mm -hmm. and this is something I'd like for us as a city to, to take more seriously mm -hmm. going forward planning including things in the budget process so that we don't have to address this through a, a budget amendment mm -hmm. um, you are in the um, terrific position of having enterprise funds and an mm -hmm. ending fund balance that mm -hmm. um, will, will allow you to to pay for this, how much of this seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars will need to be transferred from the ending fund ending balance? Fund, um, it's two hundred ninety-five thousand. And the us, the other will just come from switching between yeah, the budget switching, lines. Yeah, the ones we showed last time. Yeah, just those same ones. We just reduced the amount coming from any ending fund balance to two hundred ninety-five thousand. Okay, and that ending fund balance is there to cover capital outlay projects like this. What other projects are, will be impacted? And this is part of the planning. Mm -hmm. um, since, since we're making this budget amendment, we're obviously going to impact other projects potentially. What other projects might be impacted by doing this? Well, we, uh, each year we, we set aside um, certain monies for water and sewer improvement. That can either be expansions or uh, rehabilitation projects. Um, that's, uh, I think, in the retreat this weekend, y'all are going to be discussing some areas where we have some needs in those areas. And that's, that's specifically what that, that money is set, of, set aside for. Um, a lot of times, <laughs> and, and those of us who have been here before um, through the years know, there'll, there'll be an announcement that there's a hotel coming and this happened with the Hilton. This is a this is a good example. It was announced that they were coming to an area where we didn't have <coughs> any infrastructure. So that that money was there. Fortunately, that money was there, and they were we were able to go and um, get some um, MDA cap loan funding and, and put that project together, even during, even in the middle of the budget year. So that's you know that's what that uh, that's what that's for. And then a lot of the cash balance to Ms. Sistrunk is almost like in a private business would be like retained earnings right. you know somewhere down the road if starkville grows and and it repopulates and our demand for you know more water uh, increases and, and more wastewater treatment increases um it would be good to have the, the retained earnings there to, to go ahead and pay for those instead of going out and continuing to borrow sure. money like, they're, like they're, we have they're a critical part of, right. of doing business as a city and um, yeah just wondered what other projects we might be impacting by making this budget transfer. Yeah. And um, but but there's still enough there to, to, to hit some of these these major areas that we're talking about. Uh, we're wrapping up the Carver Drive situation down there and then we'll be moving to other areas where we've had this stormwater uh, infiltration into the sewer system. So you know we'll, we still have the money there as we go along to, to keep addressing these and, and so the money's there I, I would just come you know, as we define the project better and just get approval for the project. Um, and the, the, the money would already be in the budget to do that. And hopefully next year we'll do that as part of the budget process yes. as opposed to. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so, so the, the four items that we're basically reducing, 
we're reducing your budget in four line items by three hundred thousand. I, mean, I, I agree that we we probably need to. I mean, you feel comfortable that you're not going to have to come back for another amendment to raise those back up? Um, well, we'll just have to, you know, do what we can with this budget. Um, you know, we'll just have when we see we've reached the limit of this revised budget, we'll just have to stop and wait till the next budget period and pick it up, pick the rest up next year. Well, I guess in that question, a lot, a lot depends what the, to the request from you guys for things to do. Is it going to exceed what sure. we have budget? If it is, then we're going to have to do another budget amendment. Yeah. I mean, I just don't want to change it for the sake of changing it, knowing that we would have to do it later. But uh, well, after the the retreat when you see these areas and then we get some marching orders out of that um, start putting some projects together and and uh, getting them costed out and you know to look at the timing what's on the typical on, on your budget amendment project right here what's the construction period how many months when you plan on starting this and if approved um, if I get the approval tonight we're, we're gonna go ahead and get started immediately um, you know getting uh, uh, advertising for materials for the uh, force main replacement. Um, we'll go ahead and get that advertisement out and, um, you know, doing some of the engineering work on a lot of these other things. So, uh, you know, as soon as we get this approved, then, then we're going to go get started this week. I'm just asking about the end of the construction period. Do you think this is a six month project, oh, oh, nine month project? Okay. Um, by the end of the year, by December 31st. Possibly a 12 month, 12 month project. Further discussion. Alderman Court. <clears throat> Unless there's any other questions, I would be glad to move approval of the amendment to the budget for the Public Works Department for the seven line items enumerated. Alderman Corey has moved approval of the budget amendment for the Public Services Department for the seven line items as enumerated in the packet. Is that your motion? Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion's been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Corey, you wish to go marriage. No, thank you. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. All right. Measure passed. The next matter before you is a request from the Electric Department to purchase office furniture under state contract for the new building of the Electric Department. Mayor and Board, uh, Mr. Langston has gone back over the list of the furniture that uh, we came, um, came to you uh, with uh, on the 5th, and uh, he has revised that listing and we've been able to drop uh, our cost uh, by a little over 16000 And uh, the current uh, the revised cost for this purchase would be 58997 And we're requesting that the board uh, authorize uh, for us to purchase that, uh, that uh, furniture for the new office uh, at the state contract price. Mr. Mayor. Alden Park. Thank you. Mr. Hathaway, I want to appreciate you for taking a, a microscopic um, uh, look at this for a second time, and I want to further commend you for a um, savings of at least $16,500 to the taxpayers. And um, with that being said, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to uh, move that we grant authorization to um, the Star Collect Department by and through its manager to purchase office furniture uh, from Sullivan's Office Supply on the state contract for the new Star electric uh, administration building based upon the uh, revised price amount of $58,997.52. You may restate that. Now, give me just one second. All right, motion has been made by Alderman Perkins to authorize the purchase of office furniture from Sullivan's Office Supply under state contract 
for the new Starkville Electric Administration Building based upon the revised price of $58,997.52. That's your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the merits? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passed. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Hathaway. Thank you, Ms. Hathaway. And that uh, exhausts everything but executive session matters. Uh, at this point, we will move into a closed determination of whether there's a need for an executive session. And as we do that, unless someone from the board objects, uh, I'm going to move us into a, a brief recess. Is there an objection? Any objection? Seeing none, we now in recess. The passage of time. We have shared your joy at the birth of your children, and proudly we have watched them grow. We've taken care of your health care needs during the good times and the not so good. Your parents and grandparents have depended upon us. Together we have shared the struggles and the wonders of life. At Octibaha County Hospital, we are celebrating 30 years of being your lifelong choice in health care.